Well, here we go again. Harold Camping's failed May 21st doomsday prediction has brought us to today, October 21st. Yet another prediction that the world will end today. But all of these failed prophecies gave me an idea for a, a good video. I wonder if the average person understands when the end of the world will really happen as explained by the scientific method. It prompted this video, which starts with a brief diversion about stars. When you look up into the night sky, if you're in a rural area and under ideal conditions, you can see anywhere from 3,000, maybe 6,000 stars with the naked eye, but that's a mere fraction of the total number of stars in existence or estimated to be in existence. In fact, there are a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and there are a hundred billion galaxies in the observable universe. That's more stars in the universe than grains of sand on the beaches of the earth. A mind-bending thought. I remember when I came to the realization as a young boy that what we assigned the name, the sun, is merely a simple star like all the rest. There's nothing special about it, aside from the fact that it's the one that's closest to us. We tend to use colloquialisms like, I'm soaking up the sun. What an amazing sunrise or sunset. So on a day-to-day -day basis, it's easy to lose scope. As an example of this, on the next sunny day, try telling your friends that you are out soaking up some starlight and just watch how they react. Perhaps it doesn't register that it's just a star because seen from Earth, all we see is a blinding ball of light. But when you strip away the glare, you see what the sun really is. It's the same as every star. It's a ball of hydrogen converting itself to helium, burning hotter than a million degrees Kelvin. And our star has been burning this way for 4.6 billion years. This is an accurate scale model. Compared to Earth, the sun is massive. You could fit a million Earths inside the sun, but compared with some other stars we've discovered, the sun is rather unremarkable. This is Eta Carinae. It's over five million times larger than the sun. But if you think that's big, this is Betelgeuse, the second brightest star in the constellation Orion. It's 300 times larger than Eta Carinae. If it were our sun, it would extend beyond Jupiter. Then there's V.Y. Canis Majoris the largest star ever discovered. It is a billion times bigger than our sun. That was a necessary diversion, but back to the main point. Our sun, unfortunately, is not immune to the same fate of all stars. One day, it will die. The sun has a fixed amount of fuel in its core. It is undergoing fusion at a rate that you can calculate. You say, here's the rate it's using its fuel. Here's how much fuel you have. So it's a simple calculation to show when the sun will die. And that's in about five billion years. The sun is too small to go supernova, but in about five billion years, it will swell into a red giant and heat up. Water will evaporate. The Earth's surface will literally melt. All four of the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth will be inside the Sun for a while, that is, before they completely vaporize. Eventually, the Sun will collapse into a white dwarf where it will cool off for millions of years. And that will be the end of the solar system. Ironic. The star responsible for giving the Earth life will be the eventual result of its end. Now that might happen first, but we could meet another fate around the same time. If you look up in the sky on a clear, moonless night near the constellation Andromeda, you can see what looks like a small smudge. It's our closest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, which is twice as large as the Milky Way. 
You can see it with the naked eye. The reason why you can see it with the naked eye is because we're headed right for it at approximately 250,000 miles per hour. The collision with our Milky Way galaxy is inevitable. Our Milky Way galaxy is approaching Andromeda at the rate of about a quarter of a million miles per hour, which means that in five to six billion years, it's all over for the Milky Way galaxy. If I could live as long as I wanted, I'd make sure I'd be around long enough to witness the cosmic train wreck as Andromeda would appear prominently on the night sky. It would be a stargazer's dream. The scientific method clearly demonstrates that these events will not only happen, but they are not unique occurrences. Galaxy collisions and star destructions are routine events in the universe. In fact, for every second you watch this video, well over 3,000 stars violently perish in the universe. There goes another 3,000. And another. We don't lose sleep over these impending events because of the unimaginable timescales that we need to traverse before they occur. And it is entirely likely that humans won't even be around this long. We may very well become extinct by then. This is plausible since in the four and a half billion year history of the planet, over 99.9% .9 of the species that have ever existed on Earth are extinct. Let me say that again. Over 99.9% .9 of the species that have ever lived are extinct. The vast majority occurring naturally without human intervention. So with the colossal numbers of self-destructing stars, train wrecked galaxies and failed planetary systems, and after a crescendo of extinctions, we are left on this tiny island of a solar system that can support life on a superficial fraction of its surfaces revolving around a rather run-of-the-mill star destined to meet the same fate as uncountable numbers before. With knowledge of this chaotic randomness, it's enough to make the often extraordinary claims of a fine-tuned universe seem, well, unimpressive. In the midst of all this inevitable gloom, here's what makes me feel fortunate. I'm fortunate to be able to look through the lenses of science and recognize how incredibly lucky we are to be alive. To be humbled by the understanding that every single atom in your body was forged in the heart of a dying star. And the atoms that make up your right hand probably came from a completely different star than the atoms that make up your left hand. Science has allowed us to be able to look up in the night sky and see the Milky Way spiral arm extending to the horizon and be struck with awe with the understanding that this is how a galaxy looks from the point of view of someone inside it and there are hundreds of billions of galaxies just like ours. Is there other life out there? I often think. Is there someone, something else out there looking up at their star, their galaxy wondering the same thing? Could there be civilizations like us out there, but so far away that we may as well be alone in the universe? In the 13.7 billion years the universe has been around, it's possible that there have been civilizations that have come and gone several times over. In the end, I look up at the universe and smile with the knowledge that although we won't be around forever, We'll certainly be around long enough to see the star rise on October 22nd. But if we are responsible, we can be around for a very long time. And even after we're gone, we'll always be a part of the universe.